Hey Internet, today we're taking a look at vertical transitions in music for game audio implementation. So how do we change the way that different layers of a piece of music are playing back and how do we change them in a way that's musical and seamless? I've downloaded the tutorial and learning materials that Audio Kinetic has put out to help folks learn wise and uh, let's just run through it together. If you want to access these lessons yourself and go through them yourself, just head to Audio Connect's website. I'll throw a link in the description of this video as well. But when you open your session, this is what you will see. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're in the interactive music layout because a lot of the options that we're going to need to play around with are only visible here. So without going into a lot of explanation for you know, playlists and segments and all this sort of stuff, I'm just gonna focus on the specific transition information that, that we're looking at today. So right now, when we play this, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this as well. Uh, this is what we get. Let's take a look at the Combat A segment as we have right now. You'll notice within it that we have a lot of different layers happening. And within each of those layers, we actually have a number of different options for each of them. So if I play it back and we hear this Combat Arpeggio. You'll see that even though it has four tracks here, it's actually only playing this one. And if I press F, I can make it so that it actually plays this one instead. So this line is engaging a high pass filter, but it, it's playing that one instead. The point is that for each of these kind of groups of subtracks, it only plays one. And for this one in particular, it is uh, set to random, I believe. Yeah, random step. So every time it plays back, it will randomly pick one of these. Same thing for uh, this base grouping here, and you can tell by the blue color. Uh, what we're gonna focus on, though, is this Combat A guitar. And right now, it is set to a sequence step. So every time it plays back, it's going to first play this one. Second time it will play this one. Third time it will play this one, so on and so forth. But our goal is to create an experience that's much more dynamic and ebbing and flowing and changing uh, very closely with gameplay to mimic that cinematic experience. So I'm going to change this from sequence step to switch. And depending on what value or parameter is controlling the switch, uh, it's then going to play back a different option from all the different guitar audio that we have here. So I've got that set to a switch. Now the next step is to actually create our switch. So I'm going to go into game syncs and then within switches I have a music work unit and I'm going to create a new child switch group. So I'm creating the actual options and, and switch group itself right now. So I'm going to call this health status. And within that, I will create the actual switches. So new child switch, I'll say healthy. Then a new child injured. Badly injured. And then lastly, oops, that's not what I wanted. Then lastly, almost dead. Now, I need to assign all of these subtracks to different values for that switch. So I'm going to select the actual subtrack itself here. And in general settings, I'm going to connect it with our new switch group. So switch group, switch groups, music, health status. And then default switch state. I'm going to select healthy, so if it doesn't have any information, it's just going to automatically assume we're at 100% health or close to it. Handy when you're starting a new game. And the next part of this is to then assign each one of these subtracks to a specific switch within our health status switch group. So the guitar 
essentially adds intensity to each of the different moments that we can select from. So here it's low intensity, there's no guitar. Here we have some chugs, so it's a bit more intense. Here we have a melodic uh, line that plays with some distortion, and here we're actually playing out full chords. So it's upping the intensity every time. So let's mirror our switches to that. Here, association, healthy. Then here, we'll do association, injured. Here we will do association, badly injured. And then lastly, almost dead. And we've already got our switches showing here, fantastic. Let's start with healthy and just play it back. Great, so no guitar playing. Now let's check injured. So we should hear some chugs. All right, now badly injured, we'll hear that melodic line. And then, lastly, almost dead. Great, so right now, whenever that music switch changes to a different value, our music is changing accordingly. But a shortcoming right now is that it only does that when we play this back again. So uh, whenever it starts from the very beginning, of that music segment. So I'm going to play this back as healthy and then I'm going to switch to a different one and let's see what happens. So you notice I switched it but we don't hear a change right now until it repeats. So that, that's a lot better than no changing whatsoever, but if we're really trying to have very direct feedback and, and intensity shifts in terms of the music based on actual gameplay, this isn't really cutting it. Um, a couple seconds is, is a lot of time to not feel what we want the player to feel. So what we want to do is select our uh, music segment and then go into the Transitions tab here in the Property Editor. You can see here, we can determine, hey, when you're switching between things, I want you to do it in this way. And right now, we're exiting our current source at the exit queue. So um, when we are changing this, we're telling it, hey, don't actually change until you reach our exit queue here. And we want to be a little more specific than that. So I'm going to say next beat. Uh, so this can be pretty, pretty close to immediately when it happens. So now let's listen to it. So it's more direct, but it also has a bit of a weird, funky feel to it, especially when we're switching to that injured section because there are silent moments in that. So the timing is good, but the full execution really isn't there. It doesn't feel totally musical yet. So let's play with the fade in and fade out of these different things. So I'm going to fade out, select that, and I'm going to make the duration of it about half a second. I'm going to offset it by, whoops, half a second as well, okay? Additionally, I'm going to change the fade in, time, half a second, and I'll keep the offset the same so that when you compare them, literally one is fading out while the other one is fading in, like very much mimicking a crossfade here. So now, let's listen to these things when we switch them around. So 
it's a lot more fluid that way than it was when we weren't going into the detail of how to fade in and fade out. Cool, so our music switch is working the way that we want it to. The last point here is to tie it to our player's health so that it, it's ebbing and flowing specifically with that. Right now we have a music switch container and it's kind of arbitrary because it's not connected to anything that's really changing with gameplay itself. So let's make that association. To do that, let's go into game syncs, health status, and we're gonna select use game parameter. Game parameters, player health. So now this switch is going to be dictated by the player health so these switches will change depending on that and we just have to make associations for that itself. So you see that all the switches we've created are here on the left and we just have to match the grid with what we want. So when a player has 100% health, we whoops, want the healthy version to play and we can create another node and say anything between 80 and 100 health we want it to be considered healthy. Then let's say injured is between 80 and 50. And then badly injured is between 20 and 50. And then finally, we will make almost dead between 20 and zero. Um, so now when that game parameter changes, it changes the value of our switch. And then our switch changes what guitar option is being played back in terms of the music. Um, so now, if I want to test this out, I don't have to just select switches. Instead, I can go to RTPCs and change the value of the switch using my player's health. So let's test out the different switches that we have, having changes in our music based on the player's health. <laughs> So now the music switch container is changing its value for the switch based upon our player health. And then as soon as the next beat arrives in the music, our music is changing the layer of guitar that's playing back. So it's a very direct uh, tie to gameplay itself and it's seamless and it feels very musical and cinematic. I hope this has been helpful for people that are interested in music and audio implementation. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them on this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to stay in touch with Unlock Audio and learn some more music audio implementation goodness. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.